So this song is called I Sure Love You. I wrote it about two years ago at about six in the morning on my front porch watching the sun come up and I was deeply in love with my first girlfriend and was just feeling so thankful for all the growth and all of the support and all of the love that we were able to grow together. Um, so this song is very much a love song and very much um, now I use it as sort of a something called a, a love and kindness meditation. Um, and that's when you think about one person that you know that you love a lot. And then once you're really feeling all that love that you feel for that person, you imagine someone that you don't know very well um, and you try and send that love that you feel for the person you know very well to the next person that you don't know very well. And then you continue on in that way of thinking until you're thinking about the whole entire world and you're giving them all this love that you have. And that's really what this song has become. It's become my love and kindness meditation. Whenever I sing it, I feel thankful and happy and in love with my life and the people in it. So I give this song to you to learn and sing along with me and um, practice that love and kindness for the whole world through music. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so song structures. 
You can do whatever you want with your songs. In my songs, I tend to do what's called an intro, then a verse, then a chorus, then I do a second verse, a chorus. Sometimes I do a bridge, but this song doesn't have a bridge. It has the howling section uh, where I go, oh, 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 ooh, 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 ooh. If you can get your dog to howl along with that, I will love you forever. But anyways, so we have our bridge and then we do a, um, maybe a last chorus. Maybe we sing the chorus twice, however many times you want. And then we do an outro. And the outro is just the ending of the song. So however you come up with to end your song, that's the outro and it's totally cool. So this song only has three chords, essentially. I use a capo um, and I refer to the chords by their name um, as if I didn't have a capo on. So really I'm talking about shapes. Um, so the first chord that we have is a G shape. If you play it without a capo, it won't sound um, very good while we play together, but you'll be playing the, the right shapes. So don't worry about that. The first chord is that G shape. And the next one is an A minor shape down here. And the next one is a C. We just pick up that third finger. And then we're back to the G. So we just do a little circle. We go G, A minor, C major, G. So if you want to see what my hands are doing strumming wise, I'm doing a lot of what's called palm muting and stopping. I kind of mute it with the meat of my thumb, my palm. It's called a palm mute. Strum, pause. Strum, palm, strum, palm. That's a palm mute. And I use that a lot in this song. Texture and percussion. And then I do it on the A minor chord too. C and the G and the A minor and the C all have those stops the whole song. But don't worry too much about that if you just want to strum along and practice holding the shapes the G shape, the A minor shape, the C shape, and the G shape. If you just want to play like that and practice along, that's great too. <laughs> 